So, good morning. It's a pleasure for me to be here in this beautiful uh, city of Port Ross. I, will, I also thank you, would, like, would like to thank you, um, Istma and Yanis, for this kind invitation to be here and to present uh, our the data. And uh, today, <clears throat> today, I, and also I have, uh, I have to give a, a special greeting to, to Minister of Economic Development in Slovenia, of course, and all the sponsors. Today, uh, we are going to present the ISTMA book, ISTA Statistical Year book, and also um, to update some information, some data on Slovenia um, tooling industry, and also uh, to speak a little bit about its strategy also. And this year book is the fifth edition. The book released mainly official uh, statistical sources. And this is a good sign because it's a sign of quality of data, but uh, also uh, it comes with some trade-off because for instance, at this moment, we still don't have the production figures from Europe to, uh, from 2012. And also, we have to wait for December to have the production figures for the United States. So it's, it's, it is a trade-off. We have quality of data because it's official, but we have some delays in what concern access to uh, information. Since last year, uh, we introduced uh, um, economic knowledge to understand the micro environment in which uh, companies um, works and delivers. So in this book, we have GDP evolution, um, private final consumption, unemployment rates, labor productivity, export, imports, trade balance, in what concerns goods and service. And uh, because we are also concerned with the future, uh, and we have to anticipate the future, we have also information on youth and employment rates, and uh, what we call the composite lead indicator of OECD. This is a very interesting indicator because it gave us some feeling about what is going on in the, in the future six to 12 months. So it's, it's important to have the, also this information. And uh, this year, uh, introdu we introduced also some economic uh, highlights. To have these highlights, we accessed several uh, very important sources of economic knowledge, like OECD, IMF, European uh, Union forecast, United uh, Nations uh, statistics, and also many, many national documentation. So it's important for us to have these highlights also. Um, we start our book mainly producing graphics. In the first edition, we only have graphics about uh, um, TDM evolution. Nowadays, and since, uh, um, since uh, last year, we also have introduced some uh, numerical data. So we, you can use this data to customize your analysis also. So it's, pos in, it's possible to uh, work more with the, the data we've produced uh, these days. We introduced uh, um, four categories of products. Dyes, molds for plastics and rubbers, rubbers of course, and mold, molds for metals in what concerns injection and not uh, injection, without injection. And we have four main indicators, production, exports, imports, and also apparent market. Uh, in, in these indicators came with quantity, value, and also some kind of average price. In, in, this, uh, in these indicators. Uh, we deliver these indicators uh, in national currency, 
in North American dollar and also in euros to have uh, uh, more important data. Last year, we introduced uh, Turkey as a new country. And this year, we have also a new country, the United Kingdom. And uh, to speak about uh, the book once more, we have to say that in totals, we have about 820 graphics and 363 pages. So it's already a large and somehow heavy book. So let's speak a, a little bit about the data um, and some special remarks. What we have here? We have here the comparing of uh, the production and appearance markets for the main countries in the industry. And what we can see here is the consolidation of, of China as the first player and, the, of course, the largest market and the largest producers. But also some kind of awakening of the United States in the last two years because they start growing again. And also, I have to say, it's also important to understand, for instance, the growing importance of uh, Korea here. And I, I speak a little bit, uh, a little bit about, about this more later. The next graphics present, uh, present us with the exports and imports. And uh, I have to say that it's very remarkable uh, to see uh, the growing uh, Chinese exports in particular and I have to say this because important, it, it is important, in particular for countries that are in the regional uh, side of China. So we can understand that it, there is a regional integration. Uh, this, this is together with the labor specialization and also uh, some kind of a movement for cheapest location from some Chinese productions already. And what we have to say is, is that Japan and Korea uh, are participating in this kind of regional integration, Pacific regional integration. And that's what can be seen from these uh, figures here. There is a similar trend but uh, with some delay in what concerns dyes. It's uh, very important to say that. And we can see also that uh, uh, Japan and uh, also Korea are participating in this kind of uh, regional integration in, in what concerns also dyes. So let's speak a a little bit about the largest market of TDM industry. What you can see here about the United States is that they are um, some kind of returning to levels before the crisis here and here. So we are returning to levels before the crisis. And this is uh, important to say because we are going to, to see the same movements in, in, in other largest markets. What you can see here is uh, since 2008, China is a, a net exporter in what concerns uh, molds for plastics. And uh, it's moving, uh, sorry, it's moving for in, a diff in the same directions in what concerns uh, dyes. Um, but what you can see from this graphic also is that the largest part of Chinese productions is for domestic uh, market, of course. Let's speak about a little bit about Germany. Germany is important also for Slo Slovenian uh, industry. And what we can see is that, uh, of course, German is returning for two previous uh, levels. 
but uh, it is also important to remark uh, this, uh, this uh, movement in what concerns imports. Uh, Germany is more involved in the last two years in what concerns international trade. And we can see in what concerns export and imports in the increasing uh, figures here. Um, the same similar um, to Italy with a large increase in imports to fulfill the, the domestic demand, of course. Um, France, uh, France is a, a little bit different because what you can see is a trend to, to market reduction and production. But also, uh, we can see also some uh, remarkable increase in what concerns import and exports for the last uh, two years. Say Spain is similar with a large reduction in what concerns market and production but also with a, an increase uh, in what concerns imports in the last uh, two years. And uh, the United Kingdom, the new country for this year, it is very remarkable, this large increase in what concerns imports. So, Let's uh, speak a little bit about uh, European level. Of course, this uh, country movement has to be translation in what concerns European level. And what you can see is that uh, we are seeing uh, um, a large amount of uh, increase in what, in what concerns intra-trade uh, European um, level. Uh, you can see that it is since 2009, it is about a billion euro of increase in what concerns international intra-trade level. So it is a large amount uh, for molds and, uh, and it is similar uh, in what concerns extra uh, trade for outside the European Union. And, and also, you can also understand uh, what's going on in, in what concerns imports from China. Uh, let's uh, speak a little bit about this, because we can see that uh, the, the increase continues. The imports from China continues increasing, but uh, in what concerns the total amount of the European trade is still um, small in dimension, but I think that's more important that uh, the total amount of the imports is some kind of um, price signal that is giving to, that is giving to, to the market. <clears throat> and also in what concerns dyes, it's uh, somehow smaller than in what concerns molds, but uh, it's a large amount of uh, increase in exports inside the European Union. And uh, also a large amount of increase in what concerns extra exports for outside of the European Union. And uh, what we can see in what uh, imports from China, in what concerns dyes, is that it is growing in a fast pace, but uh, it's very small in total dimension. But it's growing in a fast pace. So what, what's going on in what uh, concerns price, average price? So, in, in dice, in the dice chapter, 
you can see somehow a reduction of average price from China. And uh, in what concerns molds, you can see somehow increasing average price. But if you look at the Chinese uh, exchange rate, you can see that uh, this increase is, also, is almost from this increase in what concerns exchange rates. It's very, very similar. So the prices that are leaving, the price of the mods that are leaving China are similar, but of course, uh, when we add the exchange rates, they are increasing a little bit, but not, not very important, I, I believe now. So, let's speak about Slovenia. Um, what we can say uh, about Slovenia? It seems for me uh, that uh, Slovenia is consolidate, uh, consolidating as an export country because almost double, more than double the export uh, figures fr since 2005 2000, to 2012 uh, in an average growth rate of uh, 12%. So it seems that uh, Slovenia is, is consolidating as an uh, export uh, country. And because, of course, in what concerns imports is stable. Let's see about uh, specific uh, figures uh, on dyes and molds. You can see the export uh, here, uh, and also the imports is stable or uh, decreasing. And somehow the market is, uh, the domestic market is also decreasing. And also you can see uh, on molds figures an increased trend in what concern export. Which are the uh, trade partners of Slovenia? Uh, we can see two major countries, Germany and uh, Austria. Uh, Austria somehow decreasing. And also we can see five smaller uh, partners, um, about four, between four and six percent of the shares, of total shares, of export shares. Hungary, United Kingdom, Romania, Slovakia, and Poland. And uh, also, uh, we can see uh, about uh, plastics is somehow different because German is the major partner, trade partner, with Austria uh, decreasing a little bit. And we have six smaller uh, uh, trade partners uh, like with Austria, uh, Czech Republic, France, Romania, Serbia, and Slovakia are uh, the smaller uh, trade partners of uh, Slovenia. So it's, uh, what we can see is that um, Slovenia industry is consolidating as an export <coughs> country. And uh, the largest, largest partners, trade partners, are close here, close to, to Slovenia, I believe. So, um, this is, is this the end of a cycle or not? So what we can see, what we can uh, see in the last uh, few years is perhaps the end of uh, the combination of uh, two models, the Asian models and, and uh, in what concerns the Asian model, we, have, we can see countries that were able to grow in a fast pace with subsidized exports, some management of exchange rates, and also not so concerned with the property, uh, intellectual property rights. And from the um, European and North America middle class side, they were happy because they were able to buy cheap products from uh, subsidized uh, uh, products that were subsidized by these countries. 
this is not uh, um, able, uh, in, this is a model, a combination of models that is not uh, um, able uh, more because uh, you know the unemployment uh, is very important and also because uh, we have to be concerned with uh, our futures. So this combination of these two models, it's not um, uh, important, it's not able to be, uh, in, um, to be present in the future. And uh, what we have been seeing is the, that um, some, kind, some kind of um, moving from a different political speech. And this speech is about uh, reindustrialization and uh, it's, it's a major speech now. This political speech is moving, but we, we, don't, uh, we cannot see the results uh, at this moment. But we can see this movement from, uh, for a different uh, perspective of reindustrialization. And we can see this in Europe, and we also can see this in the United States. Um, the, the agendas, we are going to speak about the 2020 agendas later on the agendas are, are similar. So we can expect, uh, this is a, a paradox, uh, because from one side, you, you have reindustrialization. And from, from the other side, you have free trade. So this is a kind of conflict that is going to take place, because if you want, uh, European countries, if you want the United States um, with a reindustrialization agenda, and this is a conflict between the trade, the free trade, and we are going to expect somehow some uh, um, raising uh, level of trade barriers uh, in the future. So this is the kind of uh, presentation that I have for you. Thank you very much.